my name is Jared Rivers. I'm the owner of Night Legion Comics. I am the, I would say, the pseudo historian of the 36 Killington Avenue, Rutland, Vermont. At, and I have some stories to tell today about the hauntings of this house. 36 Killington Avenue was established in 1855 by Irish immigrants uh, by the name of the Fagan family. There are major Irish families here in Rutland County. They established most of the buildings right here on the strip of road near Route 7. Um, 36 Skellington Avenue used to be a farm established by the Fagan family in the late 1850s um, and at the time was called Green Street. Eventually, it would be formed into a second story home where they established two houses uh, stacked on top of each other. <laughs> and... Throughout the history, it passed down by multiple families. The first, the Fagans, and I blanked on the names of the families that who lived here, in, uh, the, the family in between the families. But uh, the Fagans took over, and then another family took over in the late 1900s. And then by the 1950s, the Trombleys took over, which is my mother-in-law's family. And... My mother-in-law's family, the Trombleys, would also then rent to two other families in the apartment that I live in currently. Um, through that time, the also the the, the Kuzmas moved up here, which is my uh, the the Polish family that my mother-in-law's side of the family is from, and. In that time period, my gr wife's gra grandmother would have passed away in the bedroom that I live in currently. In my experiences of living in this house, after generations of living people living here, now that the the floods and the flood Goodriches live here now, um, we all tend to hear things, see things, and notice things that happen in this household and i am not surprised because within i believe seven different families living here the energies that have been passed on by each one of these families that may have just been left here and wh whether or not it's ghosts or just the plain energy of all these different people passing through here um some really weird things happen <laughs> Um, my first experience started when I moved here in 2019 and I witnessed, this is my first experience. I'm a very skeptical person. And my wife had told me that weird things happen in this house. Um, shadows move about, uh, uh, footsteps are heard, stuff like that. I'm like, ah, no, that's that's explainable stuff. I was in our bedroom at the time, which was a different room from where we are now, and I watched our air freshener machine lift about a foot off the ground, float for about two two seconds, and then fly across the room. And I was blown away by that. And that's when more and more stuff I've noticed since in the last two and a half years that I've lived with this family. Um, stories of, I would start seeing more things flow, fly across the room, things would be tossed at me. Um, doors would start randomly opening. Um, Footsteps, uh, voices would be, I would hear full-on conversations in the room next to me when there was no one in the room next to me. I would hear foot, uh, I would hear voices downstairs um, when no one was home. I would hear footsteps. Our kitchen door about once a week opens up and then the sound of multiple people walking in happens. There's many different stories to tell here, and I, just for myself, uh, that was just my end of, like, like just a gist of what I encounter 
throughout my two years here, but my in-laws say that even when my wife and I are gone and there's no one in the house and they'll hear people talking upstairs, they'll hear footsteps upstairs, like full on footsteps. Um, they'll hear, uh, arguments, they'll hear different things. And to me, I feel this is more like a residual haunting in some ways of it's not just it's not just the people who, who have, may have passed here. It's just over 150 years of people living in this same household have touched the walls here. They've touched the, the same rooms. They've lived on the third floor, which is now the attic. It's, it's, there's so much energy in this house that I just, they have left their legacies here and it, it just, it never stops moving. And up until a few weeks ago, our for our we live have an individual who lives with us, and we had told him about our little experiences here. And his about a week into his week or two into his living here, um, he was kept up all night and I was like, why did you sleep? And he goes, oh, I kept hearing footsteps in the, in the, in the kitchen. And I said, did, did you see anybody? He's like, no. And I said, okay, well maybe me telling you about the ghost might've scared you. And so I told my wife about him being kept all night and she goes, I, and I told him that he thought he heard footsteps all night. And she said, oh, I thought that was him walking around. And I was like, well, that's everyone heard that, I guess, last night. Uh, <laughs> but this home has been home to so many people for, like I said, for 150 plus years. And after two years of just seeing different things, uh, uh, difference, hearing different sounds and voices, it really started to make me believe in the other side uh, in some ways. And then to add into my stories of horror, not horror, but otherworldly beings, I we um, we also encounter what I call the shadow persons, the shadow people that live here. Um, there's certain times of night we keep our windows, uh, blinds open that night to keep the kitchen light, lit up and everything. And there will be times where the light from the streets are so bright, you could see into the kitchen, per uh, the kitchen lights up nicely. And then there's some nights that the windows get blocked by something and the whole kitchen goes completely pitch black. Um, that's the same as our end of our bedroom. Our bedroom blinds are open to, for the street light to come in for us to get up out of the bed if we need to. And there are some nights where there's a figure standing in front of the window and it completely blacks out the light, uh, the, the window. Um, there's one that stands at our end of our bed and I've never felt uh, I've never felt it was aggressive or out out of ill will. I felt it was watching us like as if it was trying to protect us. Um, there's also my first experience with the shadow people. There's also one that stands in our bedroom doorway and it's taller than the door frame and it kind of peeks in with its head twisted to the side as if it watches us sleep. And to me, that's, I've never felt threatened by it, but it's hard to describe the feeling of seeing this thing watch us. Um, the one that stands at the foot of our bed, I assume, would be my, great, my wife's great-grandmother, Agnes, who had died in the same spot where our bed is now. Um, <laughs> But in the end, this is 
the house that I live in, and over time, this is what I've gotten used to. Um, it's just just normal life for me now. The random footsteps behind me, the the doors opening at random, the the sound of people talking when no one's in the same room or in the room next to us, and the, one of our bedrooms up here. I also the most activity happens. I notice. I believe is some sort of vortex or something of a never-ending doorway for people to come in and out from the other side because our cats will watch people walk in. One of my cats in particular will watch as if she's seeing somebody walk into our front of our kitchen, which is our front door, and walk, and she'll watch them go into our living room, or she'll watch them go into the purple room, which the purple room is where I suspect where this vortex or whatever, I, I don't know what to call it. The energy just feels really strong in the center of the room. Um, it's just, it feels different in this house, and I've just gotten so used to it over the last two and a half years, and everyone here just, has different encounters throughout their time, like my wife growing up in this same bedroom that we live in now, and having friends never return from sleeping parties because they saw the person in the corner, or they saw the person at the end of their bed, or they they heard the footsteps, or they heard the voices. It's just this house, everyone in this family is used to it, but no, when first per, a new person gets encountered, uh, encounters it, they never tend to want to come back. <laughs> but in the end, I'm happy with what I live with and happy to tell the story because Rutland has such a deep-seated history, and I'm not surprised that if this house, which was built 150 years ago, how many other houses in our neighborhood alone have that same story, that same energy, the same amount of people who have passed down the houses over generations and encounter the same things that we do. All right, Jared. That was interesting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this remind me that since nobody wants to come visit you, that um, I should definitely bring all my equipment and stuff, and then that will just be a fun night to maybe see if we can capture stuff. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, if you're willing to spend a few hours here at this house, I would happily host you to try to capture the spirits of this home. Because I can tell you right now that the spirits of William and Agnes live here. Um, I have I have a spirit box that I have spoke with them before, which Agnes is the one that died in our bedroom. Um, I have Francis who lives, uh, who comes to visit, which is Jen Jennifer's grandfather, who has visited me in my dreams. And <laughs> as that one story I have spoken about, and there's this one boy that we can't figure out whose history is. His name is Peter, and we have caught him on our spirit box, and Jenna believes that he's not from this house, that he followed her from her house in Pulteney, which had poltergeist activity. Oh, boy. So... <laughs> It could be a, it could be anything really. Then anybody ball yeah. game here. Well, all right, Jared. Well, thank you so much for coming on to share your little ghost story and the history of the place that you are actually staying in. And um, you know, it's uh, good to hear other people's stories because it's always fascinating to hear like what goes on in one person's house sometimes. Yeah. But all right, Jared, well, thank you so much for your time. And for those listening, do you have a ghost story of your own? If so, you can set up a time with me or you can weave a nice little voice message with the link below. And until next time, I was Paul Oski of Haunted Vermont. And 
keep your eyes open because you just never know if an apparition will appear in front of you.